Welcome back everybody. In this part three of my series of gouache painting, I'm going to be looking at a few important tips that you can use right away in your next gouache painting. So one of the important things with gouache is being able to use layers of paint. Very much like any opaque medium, gouache really benefits from adding layers of color, building up richness, building up interest. Whereas in some parts of the painting, you may want to leave the paint thin again. So that interesting variety between layers and uh, thinner layers, thicker, etc., really gets you a lot more out of your gouache painting, especially with the fine art approach that I'm working with. Another tip that we're going to look at with gouache in this video is toning your paper. How you can turn it, whether you should turn it at all and different options with toning. And we'll see in the demonstration whether it does have an effect or not. But before we dive into the next uh, painting lesson, take a moment now if you haven't done so already to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to make sure you don't miss the next video when it's uploaded. Well, I've set up most of my palette on the Stay Wet palette I'm using. Getting out the G's finest paints to top up here and there. I've really enjoyed using this paint set over this series. And if you're looking for good gouache paint at reasonable price, this is it. So I'm going to be working with this reference. Nice warm sort of sunset colors over this dune. I've set up my 300 gram watercolor paper into two paintings and we'll compare the two as we go along. Just roughing in that composition using a large uh, short flat synthetic brush. I'm going to mix up a warm tone, a bit of burnt sienna, a little medium yellow, fair amount of water so as you can see it's fairly transparent but it's not pouring over the paper either so just an in-between light wash. Uh, I think in the sky I'm going to just bring in a little bit of that blue, just a little touch of cerulean blue and it'll help the, the sky but not dominate it. Right, option two, a much darker warmer tone. This is a semi-opaque, there's no white paint in it but it's very strong. Some medium yellow and some uh, crimson and a touch of that burnt sienna as well going into it and getting this lovely hot terracotta color. In fact, it's a real juicy color. This I really like it very much. But it, it does influence things, I think. So we'll see at the end if which option really works. So let's start off with a nice uh, strong green or warm green so there's some yellow and red basically an orange with a bit of ultramarine blue makes this lovely warm green a color you can't just get out of a tube you got to mix it so keep an eye on the color mixing as I go along it's very intuitive nothing uh, fiddly about it, nothing that should catch you out. But basically my approach is when I want a dark color I mix dark colors and when I want a cold color I mix cool colors and warm warm colors. It's something you can find out with a little bit of experimenting. Now, sort of the same look in the bottom version and you'll notice immediately how the values of the color I'm putting down here it doesn't stand out as dramatically as in the top version 
and you kind of have to believe you're getting the right value. So when you look at your subject, you've got to know that the value you're mixing is right. Now let's have a look at some shadows and compare. I'm just using a bit of that cobalt and some yellow ochre. I'm not bringing white into it. And that's a shadow there. Now you put it down on the bottom one with a strong toning and you see how that comes through. What a difference it makes. It warms it up. There's some transparency so it is showing. Now let's go into the focal area and uh, have a look and see what a difference this makes. Quite a nice light but warm color. I want, want a strong warm color obviously for this sort of sunset. Put it down here and you have to kind of feel already that the warm tone is is really accepting that hot color um, and accentuating it. Now into a deeper colder shadow into the foreground and with the white in there it's very opaque it really does cover up but notice on the darker tone surface there is still some transparency showing through so it's not as opaque as you may have thought and look at how it comes through I've left a few gaps here and there for that orange to show. And I have to say, with the bits showing through, it, it's a nice effect. And that's one of the good things about using a strong tone, is you can allow it to show through here and there. Now this shadow with a bit more warmth, and then into the sky. Now one would expect the lighter sky at the top here to add to the sort of luminescence of the sky. The light really shows up against the darker background. But maybe it's not going to make the sky as luminescent as at the, the top. So a light surface can aid a light color going over it. Now with this sort of greenish tinge into the sky over the terracotta toning much sort of darker doesn't it? It, it certainly looks that way and uh, you'd have to probably go over it again. Now if you wanted a very sunset looking sky you'd keep the sky a lot more transparent. Let the tone do its work. Now this is kind of the blocking in mostly done. I'm just going to put in a stronger cerulean blue and that blue and orange really does pop doesn't it? Quite a, quite a calmer looking blue in the top one there. Let's get in a few of the rocks and the distant beach just to complete the block in and then we'll go into putting some layers. The paint once again consistency not not very wet, not watercolour. Right now into layers, a lot more white paint making it strong and opaque trying to accentuate the value difference but trying not to lose the warmth either and that's a real challenge when you add white you cool things down dramatically so I've got to keep adding some yellow back in and try not to lose that warmth and yeah, it definitely is a challenge so the third layer with some more color is definitely going to come into it. Dark accents. 
I love the effect of adding a few dark accents as well, just to suggest some of those twigs and stones and things. And they sort of make the light stand out too. But the clouds, putting the brights into those clouds. All I really want is a sky with a bit of, um, bit of activity, a bit of movement. Not really going for perfect clouds or anything but sort of fleeting so let's get the tape off and you can decide and just have a look at these closing stages so I'm bringing a bit more warm color into it a bit of medium yellow touch of yellow ochre and just to get some nice that sunset warmth but I, I do feel there is a difference if I want strong tone to show through I definitely will make a thick and bright or strong tone underneath but if I want more luminous color I'll keep the tone lighter add a figure for a bit of reference and scale and then we'll take a last look at it Well, I hope this lesson gave you a few new ideas to try out. Use layers, use toned paper, experiment, try different things. Even if you're not sure, have a go with it. You never know what you could learn and what you could add to your repertoire of skills. Remember also you can get the G's Finest gouache paints from Amazon or look up gsfinest.com for more news on their paint. Also, if you could give this video a like and a share, that would be fantastic. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so right now and you'll get notified of the next video when it's uploaded again. I hope you have a great time with your gouache painting and until next time, cheers for now.